Hello, and a very warm welcome to today's Cell and Gene Therapy Insights webinar, titled Accelerate Your AAV Process Development with a New Wave Analytical Tool. I'm Charlotte Barker, an editor at BioInsights, and joining me today is Andrea Livk, who will discuss how the PatFix analytical system can help speed up process development. After the presentation, we'll have a live Q&A session. We invite our audience to pose their questions to Andrea using the ask a question box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to get to your question during the session. I'd also like to draw your attention to the resources tab on the right, where you can find more information on the topics covered today. Now, I just want to quickly introduce our presenter. So Andrea Livk heads the Process Analytics Development Department at Sartorius BIA Separations, where she leads a process team that focuses on the further advancement of PatFix HPLC solutions, developing methods for the analysis of biological mo molecules, including mRNA, pDNA, and viruses. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Andrea to kick off the presentation. Thank you very much for the introduction and welcome to everyone who is joining us for this webinar. Today, I will present you our chromatographic analytical platform that can be applied to different steps in AV upstream and downstream processes. Let me first introduce Sartorius Bia Separations. We are the leading developer of monolith technology an exclusive producer of convective interaction media monolith chromatographic columns. For more than 25 years, we offer chromatography columns for purification of large biological molecules and viral particles for gene therapy and the vaccine markets. We are located in the west part of Slovenia, close to Italy, where we have a world-class facility for manufacturing, research and development, and contract development activities. Our key applications are AAV, other viral vectors, plasmid DNA, mRNA, exosomes, and so on. We also provide process development services. We develop the complete purification process and transfer to customers CMO or manufacturing site. Our company is now part of Sartorius. We are Center of Excellence for Gene Therapy and Related Technology. Sartorius Bia Separations offers solutions for downstream process development and for analytical method development, particularly in the area of AAV, plasmid DNA and mRNA. My presentation is divided into five main parts. Firstly, I will introduce you to our Patrick's chromatographic platform. Secondly, I will talk about the AV purification workflow and analytics. Then, I will introduce our exciting new development, a novel method for AV capsid separation. I will describe the method scalability and orthogonal analytics. Finally, I will show how Patrick's AV switcher enables you to optimize your AV upstream process. So here's our Patvix HPLC chromatographic platform. We developed this platform to speed up our upstream and downstream processes and help our customers to develop their processes. The main features of the platform system are vetted parts are biocompatible and resistant to harsh cleaning conditions such as one molar sodium hydroxide and high salts. Quaternary pumps for complex analytical methods. All an analytical methods are based on salt or pH gradient or combination of both. So conductivity and pH monitor are very important devices. The system allows to be easy to turn into semi-prep you just need to change pump heads and you can do the scale up in a lab. Detector setup that is primarily optimized for AV applications is UV to 60 to 80, fluorescence. Fluorescence provides native protein detection 
or nucleic acids when sample is dyed with picogreen and light scattering detector. This triple combination provides the most detailed information that we can obtain in one run. We do not offer only hardware, but we provide platform applications. The platform is a complete solution tailored to customer analytical needs. We have AV, mRNA, PDNA application platforms. All these platforms contain validated analytical methods, experimental instructions, uh, protocols and report templates, accompanying standards for analytics, and matching application columns. And what makes this analytical tool so unique is actually the software. It's an easy to use software which makes it straightforward for user to apply. All these software features enable you to process your data, speeding up your process development and delivering you your product to market much faster. Now we look at how the Patrix Analytical Platform is utilized for monitoring the AV purification steps. Of course, as with any AV production process, we are faced with some purification and analytical challenges. If you look at first key purification challenges, downstream purification process is serotype dependent as there are 12 naturally occurring serotypes and more than 120 variants of AAVs. So for the AV production process, we know that impurities are heterogeneous and they are present at very high concentrations relative to the target. And then, separation of full AV capsids from inactive capsids, such as empty, partially filled capsids, which represent product-related impurities, they are technically challenging to separate. This is also the main challenge for the analytics. Besides uh, empty and full separation, it is especially important that host cell chromosomal debris are removed soon after lysis to avoid low yield. We know that low yield is typical for most AV purification platforms. If I go through the analytical challenges, as I mentioned, one of them is the separation of full AV capsids from inactive capsids. For quantification of capsid content, we still lack a gold standard analytics for quantifying empty and full capsids. The currently used methods for drug substance or drug product releases are analytical ultracentrifugation and cryotem, but they are faced with some challenges in the validation of the methods. Speed and low throughput. Any of you who are working in process development knows how important rapid analytical feedback is. Long turnaround times and low throughput are big hurdles for process development. And lastly, implementation of analytics in a quality control environment. As an example, analytical ultra centrifugation and cryo -tem they cannot be used in the control QC and GMP environments due to their softwares that are not, not uh, Part 11 compliant. Therapeutic applications of AV-based gene therapy vectors require removal of both process and product-related impurities. Let's look at some of the impurities in more detail. Process impurities, such as host cell impurities, plasmids, transfection reagents, they all come from the manufacturing process of the raw materials and components. Product impurities are formed during manufacturing process or later even during storage. Example of these impurities are inactive capsids, different capsid complexes, as well degraded and oxidized AV vectors. Both types of impurities should be controlled during manufacturing process 
and monitored during analytical testing. Both they represent serious safety threats as well as producing high manufacturing costs. Listed on the right hand side, there are also some analytical methods that are commonly used to detect and quantify these impurities. So, here is an example of our AV downstream purification workflow. It is based on two chromatographic steps cation exchange capture step uh, and full AV capsid enrichment step, which is based on the ion exchange or multimodal interaction chromatography. In each step of the process, we rely on Patvix analytics to monitor product and impurities. These results are then supplemented with complementary and orthogonal analysis to obtain a complete picture of the process. In the next slide, I will show how Patvix is implemented for the initial screening. Size exclusion chromatography is used for initial screening of AV complex sample and evaluate impurities. With this type of analysis, we monitor process-related impurities such as host cell proteins, host cell DNA and aggregates. Multiple detector setup enables monitoring such impurities during purification process. We are using UV260 marked in red, 280 in blue, light scattering in black and for fluorescence we are using intrinsic tryptophan fluorescence in orange primarily to detect protein impurities and picogreen fluorescence where sample is pre-stained with picogreen to detect DNA related impurities. This is an example where we monitored removal of impurities of a harvest sample chromatogram on the top left that it went through downstream purification steps, first pre-capture TFF step where the impurities have mostly been removed as shown in chromatogram in the middle and the remaining aggregates and DNA impurities are removed during the final SO3 cleaning step as shown in chromatogram on the right. We know that removal of impurities, in particular DNA related impurities at the SO3 step will enable better separation of empty and full capsids. Although size exclusion technique is time and sample consuming, it provides a good indication of process related impurities. A strong cation exchange SO3 column is used to capture a refraction and to determine the total concentration of AV capsids in the sample. Elution of virus fraction is achieved in linear salt gradient. This type of column works for any serotype. So if you look at chromatogram, chromatogram shows comparison of two samples, harvest dotted line and purified virus fraction solid line. From the UV and fluorescence signal, signals of the harvest sample, it is very difficult to allocate virus fraction. For such samples, light scattering detector is used. Light scattering in a complex sample works as selective detector. It discriminates eluting species according to their size. Since AV capsids are much larger than other contaminate impurities, they scatter light much more effectively. This enables us to identify AV virus peak in a complex sample. Cation exchange uh, chromatography does not separate empty and full capsids and it's therefore a perfect tool for determination of total capsid titer. So far we were looking how to determine the total AV concentration, so empty and full, and now we want to separate different types of capsids. So for that reason we have developed a new method that separates different capsid types better than standard methods. During the AV production, the whole spectrum of different types of capsids uh, is generated. As shown in the figure on the right, 
They may include full capsids, partially filled, empty capsids, aggregates and others. The final product should contain only the full AV capsids or active form which contains correct vector genome. The presence of other capsids are known product related impurities and lead to increased risk of immunotoxicity and a reduction in transduction. These impurities need to be removed and evaluated as they pose a safety risk. In particular, partially filled AV capsids, they may be even more unsafe than empty capsids. Empty do not contain any genetic material. On the other hand, the partially filled capsids may contain some parts of genome of or host cell DNA. For this purpose, robust and sensitive methods are needed for the analytics of uh, impurities and for their removal in the production process. So, there are only a few common analytical methods available for the analysis of AV capsids, in particular to address uh, partially filled capsids. As we see in the table, they all have different capabilities in terms of resolution. If I start with an exchange method, it can identify partially filled capsids to some degree, but with low resolution, as well as the method depends on type of serotypes. Currently, there are only two methods, analytical ultracentrifugation and charge detection mass spectrometry, which can provide a reasonable resolution between full, empty, partially filled and heavy or overfilled capsids. However, both these methods are not scalable and they cannot support the AV purification process. And as I mentioned before, there is a need for new analytical tools with better, better capsid separation. And finally, we have developed a new method that significantly improves the resolution of different AV capsid types. This slide shows the chromatogram of empty and full capsid separation, which is achieved with the standard and the novel method. Both methods were performed using strong anion exchange QA column, and the same sample, main SO3 elution, was used. Chromatograms show responses from all three detectors, UV to 60 to 80, uh, fluorescence and light scattering. So first, on the left-hand side, the standard uh, ion exchange method with typical sort linear gradient is shown. With this type of method, we can detect maximum three species, but we are lacking any information about other types of uh, capsids which are generated during production. On the right hand side, novel method delivers significantly improved resolution between empty and full capsids. Um, with this method, we enhanced full capsid separation from other inactive capsids. At least five different species are observed with this method, and the resolution uh, achieved between empty and full capsid is 2.9, which is almost four times higher than the standard method. If we now look at the zooming chromatogram of the new method, which is on the left hand side, uh, particularly UV results. So the UV results show the empty capsid peak with 260 to 80 ratio of 0.62 and full capsid peak with ratio of 1.34. The small valley peak uh, between the two main empty and full peaks represents partially filled capsids with, the ra with a ratio of 0.7. This, this nicely demonstrates the ability of the new method to separate partially filled capsids as well. Additional subpopulations uh, are also observed at the tail of the full capsid peak and also some they are looking at later time. They highly likely represent aggregates with slightly lower ratio compared to the full capsid ratio. 
These results are also aligned with microscopy results, where we observed also mixed aggregates of full and empty capsids, as shown in figure 1, and also some material that is attached to viral capsids, as indicated by errors in figure 2. Um, with this novel approach, much better AV capsid separation is achieved, and this method also enables us to observe multiple AV subpopulations in the sample. And now what is the most exciting feature about the novel analytical method? That the method can be scaled up. This is now a chromatogram of the novel method at the preparative scale, which is on the right hand side. For the preparative scale, we use the same column modality QA column as for the analytical scale. As we see, the prep chromatogram shows similar profile as the analytical run on the left side. The main two peaks uh, correspond to the empty and full capsids, which is E1 and E3 fraction, with uh, the uh, valley peak uh, E2 fraction in the middle and additional subpopulations E4 fraction at the tail end of the full peak. All four fractions marked on the chromatogram were collected and further analyzed with our novel analytical method. All four preparative fractions were individually analyzed using the novel method and we monitored UV to 60 to 80 signal with the response shown in the top left chromatogram, light scattering signal, bottom left chromatogram and for fluorescence we used two signals picogreen and tryptophan with the responses shown on the right hand side. All three detectors show similar profiles for the four fractions. Looking at the UV results we see E1 fractions which represents mainly empty capsids. The E2 fractions which corresponds to the small peak in the valley between the empty and full capsids show two separate peaks with 260 to 80 ratios of 0.82 and 0.73. These two peaks uh, represent partially filled AV capsids with different electronegativity, possibly even containing DNA impurities. When we look at the picogreen fluorescence, we observe the high picogreen fluorescence signal of the E2 fraction compared to to the other three fractions. The high signal indicates a considerable amount of DNA related impurities on the surface of the capsids and these results are also aligned with the microscopy results which I showed you before. The E3 fraction contains mostly full AV capsids with a small population of partially filled capsids as shown with picogreen fluorescent signal. And lastly the E4 fraction, which alludes at latest time, contains heavy AV capsids or aggregates. For the results obtained, we can conclude that the novel separation method performs well at the preparative scale. So preparative fractions were further then validated by ultracentrifugation, uh, which was coupled with Patwix detectors. For this orthogonal analysis, we combine the sensitivity of the Patwix detectors with the resolution of the ultracentrifugation. Uh, first, we performed density gradient ultracentrifugation using cesium chloride gradient, during which capsid populations separate based on their density. The denser, full capsids, settles at the bottom of the centrifuge tube, whereas the empty capsids are located higher at the top of the gradient. The material is pumped through a small capillary, bypassing mixing chamber, autosampler and the column directly to the Patwix detectors. The heavy fraction from the bottom tube reaches the triple detectors first. The lighter fractions, which are high up in the tube, appear at the detectors at later time. This sequence is clearly shown by triple detector signal in the right hand side diagram. So the Patwix ultracentrifugation results of the four preparative fractions are shown in the two centrifugrams. On the left we have UV results and on the right the tryptophan fluorescence results. 
Results obtained by both detectors show a very similar sequence of peaks of all four preparative fractions. So from the UV results, we see that the heaviest fraction, E4, which represents mostly aggregates, is observed on the detector first. It is followed by the E3, which is the full capsids fraction. And then the two latest peaks are partially filled and empty capsids, and they both appear at roughly the same time. Disordered peak of E2 fraction indicates the presence of slightly heavier capsids, as E2 appears at slightly earlier time than the empty capsid fraction. We are still planning to use other orthogonal methods to further characterize all these different fractions. And this brings me now to the upstream process. We have developed a new fast atline and robust analytical tool called Patvix AV Switcher. Patvix AV Switcher is used for rough quantification of empty and full particles in the upstream complex samples. Patvix AV Switcher is an automized two-column analytics. The first column serves for purification of sample and is cation exchange column. And then the second column is an ion exchange column where empty and full separation is achieved. In a way, this is downstream purification and analytics on a small scale. Let's look at this, how this works. Samples such as media, whole harvest or cell pellet is first acidified, centrifuge, filtrated and then analyzed on cation exchange column where we are using pH gradient. The proportion of pH gradient elution is then redirected on the second ion exchange column where empty and full AV capsids are separated along the salt gradient. The triple detector is used for this analysis. The most useful information for empty and full separation is received from the light scattering detector, but with other detectors you will be able to get additional information such as 260 to 80 ratio, the protein content and more. The main advantage of this analysis is that it takes only 20 minutes and it's suitable for low concentration titers as high injection volumes can be used. With this Patvix analytics, we can estimate empty and full ratio. Uh, you could determine the relative titer based on light scattering signal. For absolute titer determination, you will need calibration curve. The system is three to four times faster and much more informative than conventional methods such as PCR assays or ELISA. Patvix AV switcher also provides additional flexibility so you can modify the position of the UV detector to monitor desired column, either cation exchange or anion exchange. Depends on your needs. On the top we have switcher configuration with two steps, purification and empty and full separation step. In the first setup, UV detector is positioned at purification step. Such setup will allow you to optimize your uh, cation exchange analytical method and you will be able to monitor in what state is your column. This you will be able to determine from your UV profile and you will exactly know when to clean it or replace the column. Then we go to the second system setup where UV detector is positioned in the empty and full separation step. Such setup will enable you to receive information from empty and full separation from all three detectors. UV to 60 to 80 will provide you with the ratios of empty and full capsids, and both setups will give you information on impurities such as protein-based impurities, aggregates, complexes, and more. An estimate percentage of empty and full capsids from fluorescence and light scattering detector, 
Light scattering uh, detector will provide you with more accurate percentage of full capsids. And both setups will allow you analysis of diluted samples. Let's look at uh, now some examples. This is an example of using Patrick Savy Switcher Analytics to test the robustness of upstream process replicates, which were prepared in Ember 250 ml vessels. The same upstream process is replicated in three vessels with different times of post transfection day 1, day 2, and day 3. These are the light scattering chromatograms for the vessel 1, 2, and 3 with a signal for each post transfection day. In the tables below, we have the results for titer determined by digital PCR and the percentage of full capsids, which was determined by peak area or peak height of the light scattering detector. If you are looking at the results of all three vessels, uh, very compar comparable results were obtained, confirming the robustness of this process. If you look across the replicates, the titer and the percentage of full capsids are higher on day 2 compared to day 3. So this is an indication that you might need to stop pr your process earlier. In order to know when you need to stop the upstream process, you need to monitor kinetics of virus production. This is an example of the multiple sampling of the capsids taken from the 5 liter bioreactor. As seen on the chromatograms on the left, uh, both tryptophan fluorescence and light scattering detector are used to determine the percentage of full capsids. However, more accurate estimation you will obtain from light scattering response since protein impurities will impact on the tryptophan fluorescence signal. If you look at now the graph on the right showing us percentage of full AV capsids with increasing post transfection hours. So we see that at 42, 48 and 54 hour we have reached a plateau of full capsids and the process should be stopped at that point. This is what Patrick Switcher allows you to do. Monitor this type of analysis in real time. The process is quite fast. You can take the sample from the bioreactor, prepare it and analyze it. The analysis will take less than 20 minutes. The Patrick Switcher real time monitoring also allows you to avoid running the upstream process for additional days, which would lead to an increase in impurities that need to be removed and higher manufacturing costs. At the beginning of my talk, I also mentioned that uniqueness of the Patrick's analytical tool is in the software. Uh, Patrick's software has been developed as a key tool for every process development and quality control lab. Here I just want to summarize a few key features. The software is accessible via web browser. It allows you to monitor and control uh, multiple detectors, currently uh, UV, fluorescence, light scattering detector. Much more detectors will come in the future. Uh, you can access and analyze your data from any location and uh, you can import uh, chromatography data from multiple systems into a single chromatography database. The software is also Part 11 compliant. Patrick software differentiates from other chromatographic softwares uh, through the addition of application platforms and post uh, data analysis tools. As I mentioned before, it has built in different analytical platform applications like Plasma DNA, mRNA, and coming soon also AV platform. Each platform includes easy to follow instructions from buffer, standard, sample preparation, to calibration curve creation, and at the end also report printing. Validated analytical methods that uh, cover um, the whole production process 
uh, are embedded into the software. Software at the end uh, enables you to set up a series of post analysis calculations like peak derivatives, detector offset, signal averaging, and so on. Uh, you can calculate uh, UV visible signal uh, ratio throughout the whole chromatogram and uh, you will be able to easily determine particle size uh, using various fitting models or perform aggregation analysis and characterization. Uh, each year uh, new features or data analysis tools are added into the software which makes it a software very easy for user to apply. And let me now recapture the main messages from my talk. I hope you share some of our excitement about the new AV capsid separation method, which delivers a significantly higher resolution than the standard methods. Importantly for the AV purification process development, the novel separation method was successfully applied at the preparative scale. Based on all the results obtained so far, it is a highly promising method to assist future safer vaccine manufacturing. The PathFix platform is our essential tool for the AV analytics, applicable for monitoring of every step in the AV production process providing a trusted link between the upstream and downstream process development. It is a highly reliable rapid analytical platform ideal for accelerating AV process development and quality control. The new high resolution method for AV analytics, which is currently being embedded into the system, will become one of the important methods for our Patrick's AV analytics. In addition to the novel AV method, Patrick's platform utilizes Patrick's and ultracentrifugation, an orthogonal technique that provides additional insight into AV particle populations. Patrick's AV switcher is a fast and robust analytical tool to analyze complex upstream and early downstream AV samples in a short time. It enables monitoring of empty and full capsid kinetics immediately after transfection. Lastly, I want to thank Sartorius BS Separations, especially the process analytics team, also on the photo, viral vectors and vaccines and R&D teams and the Patrick's product manager for their commitment to producing this work. And thank you for... Brilliant, thank you very much, Andrea. Great presentation. So we're going to start the Q&A now. So thanks for joining me uh, on camera. Um, so the first question I've got here uh, what are the advantages of a, a new anion exchange method uh, compared to other orthogonal um, analytics available for AAV capsids? So, hello to everyone again. Uh, so, one of the primarily advantage of the that novel uh, high resolution method is that the method is uh, linearly scalable comparing to, let me see, analytical ultra centrifugation uh, or charge detection, mass spectrometry or cryo TEM uh, analytics uh, where primarily these methods are used for uh, release of a uh, drug substance or drug product. So you will be able to, this method enables you primarily to really uh, manufacture uh, safer AV based uh, therapies. Uh, the other thing it is also uh, time when you're comparing to the uh, analytical ultra certification or also um, the other the other thing it's also that uh, you will be able to uh, primarily also um, 
and another thing which uh, which uh, which I think it is also that uh, that um, what did I want to say? Um, <laughs> The, uh, the time and the other thing it is because you have multiple detectors, uh, it will allow you to to monitor or to detect other other uh, impurities or species which you have still in the sample. Perfect, thank you. Um, another question here: um, Can PatFix as an analytical tool be used for in-process AAV monitoring? It's an interesting question. Um, yeah, uh, because um, so we developed um, fast and robust uh, AV switcher uh, method, which is primarily used for quantification of uh, empty empty capsids uh, in um, crude samples. Uh, specifically, with these samples, you have a really low concentration of your uh, virus fraction, and. Uh, with detectors like mass detector, you will be able to to really uh, quantify uh, that kind of uh, uh, um, virus fraction. Yeah. Brilliant. And um, another if question... I want to expand a little bit more, you know, on AV switcher, as as I mentioned uh, before, but I just want to recapture it that this is like a. a, a, a Two-dimensional analytics. You know, we have for in first dimension we have purification step where we are using strong cation exchange column, and then in the second step it's more separation step. You know, where we separate empty and full capsids. Great. And um, uh, another question here: audience member asks, "Can I use uh, the new um, anion exchange method for all serotypes? And if not, what would be some possible alternatives?" So um, the new uh, high resolution method, it was developed, that method was developed on a strong anion exchange column. So we tested so far um, serotype uh, AV2, uh, 3, uh, 8, and, and also 9 serotype, which is really difficult to separate empty and full separation. So um, it's, 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 it's really promising method. You will be able to also with that kind of method you 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 are able also to detect um, partially filled capsids. Cool. And um, is there any sample preparation required uh, prior to QA analysis? So um, generally, no sample preparation is required. Uh, primary sample is uh, pretty much diluted in mobile phase A. So you need to know that a conductivity of your uh, sample does not uh, really exceed uh, the uh, conductivity uh, of the, your uh, starting method conditions. Okay, so your sample needs to bind on the column and then elute in the gradient. Brilliant. And um, another question here, can PatFix AAV switcher also be used for different serotypes apart from AAV8? I guess that's kind of a repeat of a previous question, but I don't know if you want to elaborate yeah, more. Um, uh, the method which was developed, the method currently which is developed and it's really optimized for AV switcher, it's uh, uh, for AV8 serotypes. Um, but um, what so we also tested uh, AV3 serotype. Um, of course, uh, we will need to optimize the uh, uh, method for different serotypes, specifically that part, separation part, where you have empty and full separation. In that part, you will need to, uh, we will need to optimize the method. Also, what we are currently doing uh, or applying uh, currently now is really we are applying the uh, high resolution method also uh, on switcher. So you will be able really to detect this. Um, and we are seeing, uh, we are getting quite optimized, uh, quite uh, promising results. So we are also uh, uh, seeing or observing uh, partially filled capsids also with the switcher that is with the harvest or crude samples, which are pretty much dirty samples, yeah. Great, thank you. And how long does it take to get an empty full ratio from um, from the harvest sample or the bioreactor um, and the PatFix switcher analysis? 
So sample preparation so takes roughly 30 minutes. So you take sample from bioreactor, you acidify, you centrifuge, and then you filtrate also. And then sample goes uh, to switcher. So this is still at line analytics. Um, and uh, the actual analysis takes only 20 minutes. So we have, yeah. Roughly, roughly uh, less than an hour, I would say that um, for analyzing one sample. But of course, you need to take into account that that sample preparation. You can do multiple samples for that part. Sample preparation. We are also developing or, or also looking a little bit further, and we would like to really automate that sample preparation part uh, as well. So, yeah. great. Watch the space. Um, and how how does the column how do the column analytics uh, process function? Oh, how how does the column and analytics process function on each column? Tell me a minute. The analytics on each uh, column operates simultaneously. So when uh, one column um, undergoes, let me see. Um, cleaning and uh, regeneration process, uh, the other column really undergoes uh, under the full uh, separation uh, process. So you have full separation and vice versa. So um, yeah, with that kind of, um, we try to optimize, primarily we optimize this at this part of analytics for AV8 uh, serotypes. Uh, currently, you will be able to do, let me see, um, 10 to 15 uh, uh, samples with one set of uh, columns. You know, that also depends on the your impurity of the samples. Brilliant, thank you. And uh, final question, is the Patfix AV switcher available? And if not, when will it be? Patfix AV switcher will be available as a beta tester by uh, end of this year. And then later on, later on uh, in um, at the beginning of on next year, that is 2024, uh, will be available as a full product. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Andrea, for answering those questions. Thank We're going to wrap up there for today. Um, any questions that we didn't get to, though, we will reply by email. So don't worry, we we'll go unanswered. Uh, the webinar will be available on demand tomorrow, so look out for an email from us with the link. And I think all that's left is to thank Andrea once more for a great presentation, and thank you to the audience for listening. We hope you'll join us again soon.